Hello good yo-yo people. On today on Let's Talk Yo-Yo, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I was perusing my local library, trying to find books on a little bit of yo-yo history. In particular, I was looking for books on different yo-yo figures throughout history that have made a major impact on this toy, uh, this hobby. And uh, one name that constantly comes to mind when I think of yo-yo history and people that have made a everlasting impact on the yo-yo is Pedro Flores. And so I found this book, and uh, when I first saw the book, I didn't catch that it was in the juvenile uh, young adult section. And so it is a kid's book, and it's got pictures. And so I thought, instead of just reading it for myself and kind of regurgitating everything, because uh, you can Wikipedia him yourself also, I figured I'd take a little time and have a little story time with y'all. All right, so grab your juice boxes, grab your snack. Today, we're gonna read a little bit about Pedro Flores coming to America and establishing his yo-yo company. So in good reading rainbow form, I'm gonna go ahead and read you the book, Yo-Yo Maker, Pedro Flores, by Paige V. Polinski. Chapter one, new life. Pedro Flores was a passionate inventor and salesman. He brought new life to a toy that had been around since ancient times. He started the modern yo-yo craze. Pedro Edrelin Flores was born on April 26, 1899 in the Philippines. He grew up in Vintar, a town in the Lacos Norte province. Little is known about Pedro's family or early life. The early 1900s were a difficult time in Pedro's homeland. The United States had just won the Spanish-American War. Before the war, Spain had ruled the Philippines. As part of the treaty, it gave the Philippines to the United States. But many Filipinos were tired of being ruled by another country. So, in 1899, a war began between the Philippines and the United States. The Philippine-American War lasted three years. The United States won in 1902 and kept control of the Philippines. This brought changes to Pedro's hometown. It was annexed by the city of Bacara for several years, only to break ties in 1908. Young Pedro's life continued to change. In 1915, he moved to the United States at the age of 16. Chapter 2. A Busy Student Flores was one of many U.S. immigrants from the Philippines. Because their nation was under U.S. control, Filipinos could travel to the United States easily. The United States also ran a Filipino education program. The program sent Filipino students to U.S. schools. Some historians believe Flores may have been part of this program. By 1919, Flores was living in California. He continued his education there into the 1920s. He attended San Francisco's High School of Commerce. Then, he enrolled in the University of California's Law School. He later studied law at San Francisco State University. Flores spent several years studying law, but he did not become a lawyer. Instead, he began working at a California hotel. Flores helped guests check in and out of the hotel. He carried their bags to and from their rooms. It was at this hotel that Flores would make toy history. Chapter 3. Something Old, Something New One day in 1927, while taking a break at the hotel, Flores carved a wooden toy. It was made of simple round discs attached to a string. Flores held the string and dropped the discs, which spun and returned to his hand. This toy was nothing new. In fact, it was a very popular toy known as a yo-yo back in the Philippines. But something about the toy he carved sparked the fascination of onlookers at the hotel. Flores noticed that people were interested in his toy. He had recently read about a millionaire who got rich selling a hand game called Paddleball. This game involved bouncing a ball attached to a rubber band off a paddle. And Flores didn't expect to make millions of dollars, but he was tired of working for other people. He wanted to run his own business, and he knew his yo-yo had potential. The Yo-Yo Manufacturing Company was born on June 9, 1928. Flores carved the company's first 12 yo-yos by hand. He then sold them to children in his own neighborhood of Santa Barbara, California. The yo-yos were a huge hit, 
By November, Flores had already sold 2,000 of his own toys. Chapter 4 Ancient Success It was no surprise that Flores's yo-yo became so popular. It is one of the oldest toys in the world. The first recorded yo-yos were made as early as 500 BCE. That's before the Common Era. Ancient Grecian urns show people playing with discs made of clay, wood, or metal. These discs were often painted with colorful images. A string was attached to their center. By the 1500s, this disc toy had reached the Philippines. There it was named yo-yo, meaning come, come, in the native language. Filipino children carved their own yo-yos out of wood and bamboo, but they made a major improvement to the toy. Instead of fixing the string to the disc's center, they looped the string around it. This let the disc spin at the end of the string. The yo-yo continued its journey to France in the 1700s and then Great Britain. It was a popular toy among British royalty. In the 1860s, the toy entered the United States. Inventors James Haven and Charles Hetrick received the toy's first U.S. patent in 1866. Other U.S. inventors tried to improve the yo-yo design, but the toy never became very popular. It would take Pedro Flores to kickstart the U.S. yo-yo craze. All right, boys and girls, that's going to do it for part one of yo-yo maker Pedro Flores. And as usual, good day and good yo-yo.